I felt very hopeful when it went to Supreme Court that we were gonna be victorious and not kind of get shattered all over the place. Clap your hands, raise your voice. Equal pay is not a choice. Clap your hands, raise your voice. The Supreme Court's gonna change laws to help the big companies just get richer and do what they want to their workers. I couldn't basically have my day in court. That was more than anything else probably the one moment when I was really angry. The justice system that was supposed to be helping an American citizen at least get his day in court wouldn't allow that. The Roberts Court is basically a pro-business court. If they don't have a desire really to open the federal courts up to suits by average Americans, either workers or consumers, or people who are injured by various products. Um, it's a pro-business court. In a landmark decision, the Supreme Court rules corporations can spend unlimited amounts of money to elect and defeat candidates. The Citizens United's impact has been dramatic. And since then, our system is in the worst free fall it's been in since the Gilded Age, probably worse. So this is a, a new record of corruption and a lack of, of accountability for American elections. Corporations have seized control of our democracy. The most misguided, naive, uninformed, egregious decision of the United States Supreme Court, I think, in the 21st century. Our government is being taken right now. Hello, I'm Katrina Vanden Heuvel. As a journalist and commentator, I've written and spoken often about the Supreme Court. Over the years, I've learned that the court's cases are not just about dry legal issues. They're really about the lives of everyday people and about the future of our country. In this film, you'll meet a woman who learned she had twice as much experience as a man in the same job, got paid half as much, but couldn't get justice at the Supreme Court. You'll meet two young people whose lives were devastated by a generic drug, but have been prevented from standing up for their rights in court. Why? Because today's Supreme Court has decided that when everyday people run up against powerful corporate interests, the big corporations almost always win. That's a change from the days when I began writing about the Supreme Court. As you'll see, nothing makes that change more clear than Citizens United, the disastrous decision opening the floodgates for corporations wanting to influence elections. Listen to the voices in this film, then add your voice to those who demand change. It's not too late to act. It's certainly not too soon to start. In fact, big business started over 40 years ago with the help of Lewis Powell, a corporate lawyer who would become a Supreme Court Justice. Powell, before he got on the court, worked for the Chamber of Commerce, and he wrote a memo that talked about how corporations need to get involved, affecting the judiciary in a way that is gonna benefit corporations. And he urged a kind of conservative activism and a plan to make business interests uppermost in the agenda of Supreme Court rulings. So what Powell demanded is now happening in case after case. In the 2011 decision, Walmart versus Dukes, the Supreme Court ruled that female employees of Walmart could not band together and bring a class action suit against the company. I brought this case because I believe that there was a pattern of discrimination at Walmart, not just in my store, but I believe it is across the country. Betty Dukes was joined by several other plaintiffs representing about one and a half million women in the class action suit. They were alleging that the uh, company systematically paid them less than men doing the same work at the same stores at the same time and denied them systematically the same opportunities for promotion that it regularly afforded men. I'm very confident. Class actions in the United States are aimed at just precisely that kind of uh, situation where you have a company, it's doing the same thing to large numbers of people. Individuals really won't have the wherewithal to bring the case. And we're going to make a difference. Hi, I'm Chris Kwapnoski. 
And you're still at Walmart, right? I'm at Sam's Club, yes, division of Walmart. I was in my 15 years with, with Sam's, um, and I found out that a seven and a half year partner, a male partner, was making twice as much as I did and had zero responsibilities. Kwapnowski repeatedly asked for a raise and four promotions. I had asked several times about the money thing, and at one point I was told that he had a family to support. And at that time I was a single mom with two smaller children, and I also had a family to support. I was told, you know, men have families to feed. Besides the fact that every male that came through there as a MIT, which is a manager in training, I was the person they sent them to to train. So they were getting promoted literally off the street and through the, through the ranks of the club, promoted over me, and I was doing the training, and yet I couldn't get into a management position. Back when I was in receiving, I was still asking why I wasn't getting promoted, and the general manager at the time had told me that I needed to doll up and blow the cobwebs off my makeup. The individual stories, although had the same kind of glue holding them together, which was, you're a woman and you're in second place. The women of Walmart brought the case to stand up for their right to be treated equally, but they never got that far. The decision turned on whether their claims had enough in common. The conservative majority raised the hurdle for class actions and made it harder to prove discrimination. The Supreme Court ruling has been described as too big to sue, that, that it's just impossible that 1.5 million women could be having the same claim in you know, thousands of different stores with thousands of different managers all over uh, the country. The disparities were striking and consistent throughout the country. They were about $1,200 per woman per year for the hourly employees, and they were fifteen dollars to $20,000 a year for the salaried managers. I felt very, I want to say sorry for Joe when he was up there trying to argue the point, but yes, in black and white, we have policies in place where nobody will be discriminated against and we have you know no retaliation policies sure it's all printed every company has them whether or not those policies are being broken is a whole nother story when he was up there trying to make them understand that yeah there were policies in place but they broke them all over the country I almost wanted to jump up and was like listen I know what he's trying to tell you but you're just not listening to what he's saying the current Supreme Court seems quite hostile to class actions. I think it thinks that they are too risky for the corporations on the other side. Because if you've got a case with thousands of workers in it or thousands of consumers, the pressure on the corporation to settle is greater. So instead of it being corporations facing too much pressure to settle, it will be individuals facing too little ability uh, to bring their cases in court. And there's been a history of the Supreme Court making it much more difficult for individuals to have access to justice. Another recent Supreme Court decision, Pleva versus Mensing, is also preventing everyday Americans from having their day in court. The case was about whether the manufacturers of generic drugs can be held liable under state law for failing to adequately warn consumers of health risks. It was brought by Gladys Mensing, who developed severe neurological problems after taking the generic version of the anti-nausea medication Reglan. She sued the generic drug manufacturer, Pleva, for failing to warn about those health risks. At issue is the fact that state laws require generic drug companies to warn consumers of dangerous side effects, but federal law requires the warning labels on generics to exactly match the brand name drug even if they later become aware that the drug may be dangerous. In the Pleva case, the Supreme Court ruled that federal law overrides these state laws. Federal law now says, no, the generic company has no responsibility if their drug has injured uh, a consumer. And it's a very, very serious problem. Although the Pleva case was about Reglan, its impact extends to anyone who takes any generic drug. 
I mean, I know now that I took the generic version, but at that point it was just whatever the pharmacy gave me. I didn't have a choice. Camille Baruch, a Maryland high school student, was prescribed the generic form of Accutane for acne when she was in middle school. The biggest thing they stressed was to not get pregnant. They didn't mention anything else about any of the other side effects. But she developed severe gastrointestinal problems. She was in so much pain, it was so difficult to be around her. She was crying all the time. Camille was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. The symptoms kept getting worse and by the next year, I was at a point where they couldn't control the symptoms and their only choice was to do surgery. These are Cammie's medical records. One, two, eight. They did a total colectomy because by that point, the disease had spread through my whole large intestine, so they took out my whole large intestine. We had a lot of hope that that was going to be the end of our problems. After the first surgery came and went, and then the second, the third, and as it ended up, Cammie had every complication in the book. This is five years' worth of records. In less than two years, I had six surgeries. This one is for spasms. And she must still take an array of medications. These are antibiotics. This kid went through hell, and she's lost, I mean, she, lo she lost a lot of her identity, but she lost you know, her, her space in life. The Baruchs learned there was a suspected connection between Accutane and colitis. The, the attorneys that, that we talked to thought that this was an extremely compelling case, everything that she's gone through. But then came the Pleva decision. I read that decision and I was struck by the fact that in a 5-4 decision of the Supreme Court, the one thing they all agreed on, it leads to absurd consequences. And I could not agree more that that's exactly what it leads to. In a previous ruling, the Supreme Court had decided that consumers harmed by a brand name drug can sue the manufacturer. You have the case where there are brand name drugs, the same injury that happened to my daughter, if she had taken brand name Accutane, she would be settled and set up for the lifetime of cost she's going to face as a result of this illness. Any of the 70% of drugs that are prescribed in the U.S., which are generic drugs, you now have no ability to have recourse. A student at Harvard, Gabriel Drapos, also took a generic form of Accutane when he was in high school. Gabe was also diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. He too tried medications with no success and had to have his large intestine removed. He contacted a lawyer. And he said that he thought it was a clear-cut case. Again, until the Pleva decision. And we spoke again and he said that as a result of uh, Pleva v. Mensing, that he wouldn't be able to represent me in this trial, that, that I couldn't basically have my day in court. I mean, it hurts me by the fact knowing that no one is going to be held responsible for this, that I'm 18 and my life has been shattered and I have to rebuild my whole life. But knowing that other people are getting sick from it is just as bad. When people are injured, they go see a lawyer and when the lawyer asks them, well, was this a generic version? And when, they, if, when the answer comes, yes, and the lawyer says, well, then I'm sorry, you don't have a case they will be disappointed to learn that the Supreme Court took away their rights. But one case stands alone as the most notorious Supreme Court decision favoring corporate interests. In 2010, Citizens United versus the Federal Election Commission rewrote the rules of American politics, striking down decades of precedent and helping to unleash a torrent of corporate money into our elections. The decision and those that have followed have fatally undermined efforts at campaign finance reform, such as those led by Republican Senator John McCain and former Democratic Senator Russ Feingold. So this is a heavy decision for the court to make, a step that certainly uh, should not be taken. The case was really about something entirely different than what they did with it. The case was about a movie that was made about uh, Hillary Clinton for DirecTV. Uh, and the question was whether the McCain-Feingold bill would have said that that couldn't be shown just prior to an election. So it was a very narrow question about 
something that really wasn't about McCain-Feingold. I know, I helped write the bill. And so there was no intention to get at that sort of thing. For some reason, the court, we think led by Chief Justice Roberts, said, we're going to distort this and turn it into an opportunity to overturn essentially a hundred years of good law and for the first time let corporations use their treasuries to run unlimited ads about candidates. And they claim that, that you know, corporations are people too. That when it says we the people in the Constitution, they meant corporations. But corporations then were very different than they are now. They were mostly limited, they were charters from the government. Citizens United extended First Amendment protection to a corporation which is a non-human entity. And I think it is a legal fiction that benefits corporations to a degree that disempowers the actual human voices. Last week, the Supreme Court reversed a century of law that I believe will open the floodgates for special interests, including foreign corporations, to spend without limit in our elections. Justice John Paul Stevens, in his final year on the court, wrote the dissent. Justice John Paul Stevens, who was 90 years old at the time, did something very unusual. He uh, made the other justices listen to him for 20 minutes as he explained how awful this decision was. The court's premise is particularly misguided when it is the identity of corporations that is at issue. Simply put, corporations are not human beings. It really is a kick in the teeth to our democracy. The Supreme Court has badly lost their way today. There's too much money washing around, and there is too much corruption associated with that kind of money. I've never seen the court in more negative perception than in my lifetime. Uh, there's just a feeling that, how can the Supreme Court have done this awful thing? Uh, and I believe the decision will ultimately be overturned because of that feeling. In his written dissent, Justice Stevens said, the court's ruling will, I fear, do damage to this institution. At bottom, the court's opinion is just the rejection of the common sense of the American people. While American democracy is still imperfect, few outside the majority of this court would have thought its flaws included a shortage of corporate money in politics. We the people! Mr. Chairman, we are well on our way to seeing our great country move toward an oligarchic form of government. There has been a politicization of the court, most definitely, and that's when the American public should be concerned. I'm worried about the future of the justice system. I don't think that they're really taking anything that we have to say, the smaller people, into consideration. It's about the deep pockets, the big business. I would tell especially people of my generation to pay attention to the Supreme Court. By and large, the Supreme Court goes unnoticed. And I think that needs to change because precedent set by the Supreme Court has more lasting power than anything done by a single president or anything done by a single Congress. Take to all kinds of barricades, electronic ones, physical ones. And with you, and with you, and with you. Public discussion and pressure on this can have an enormous impact. I hope you're as outraged as I am. In that building inscribed with the words equal justice under law, the Supreme Court has decreed that justice should be unequal. Let's change that. We can, with your help. Get the word out in your local media, town meetings, community gatherings, social media, and in political campaigns. Fight to end the way big corporations can discriminate, ignore the consequences of their actions, or use their wealth to dominate the ballot box. Fight to make sure Washington appoints judges committed to giving all Americans a fair shake. Remind Congress it has the powers to level the playing field and demand they do it. Can one person fix this problem? No. But visit unequaljustice.org to find out how you can work with others. When it comes to fairness, the court's actions take us one giant step back. But even five Supreme Court justices don't have the last word. We do. <laughs>